Question four. If I don't do well on the SAT, should I keep retaking it until I get the score I want? Um, I think if you don't do well on the SAT the first time, there's no harm in retaking it again, especially if you're willing to put in more work the second time around to do the practice test, maybe reach out to a few people to get some help, um, maybe figuring out what you did, like looking back at the results of your first SAT and looking at where you didn't do as well, going back and fixing those errors. But if you're just going to take the SAT again and not do anything to help your score, I don't think it's going to help raise your score the second time around. Like you're not doing anything different. Um, so you're just kind of wasting time well, and money. To counteract that point, if you How want dare to, you? I know. <laughs> um, I think oh, we talked a lot about test prep, and that's great. It's a great resource, and you should definitely do it. Like no doubt about that. <clears throat> but when you actually take the test, you get into okay. This is the test. I'm in this room. I'm taking this test. This is real time, big leagues. So your anxiety goes right up. So the first time you do it is going to be nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. So I think the only benefit if you don't do any of the extra stuff, which you should definitely do without a doubt, is you have the ease of mind that yes, I've been here before. I know the routine. I know what's going to happen. So there is a little bit of a difference in that regard, especially if you have a really high anxiety for testing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Just, yeah. I think it's it really it depends. There are so many factors. Um, you know, it depends first and foremost how just how poorly you did on your first go. Um, it's also you know worth mentioning that a lot of schools these days are looking at an applicant's their applicants more holistically rather than just certain elements like just their grade point average, just their test score. Um, so if you, you know, are a strong student with lots of extracurricular activities or, you know, one thing that you're really a shining star at and you just happen to not test well, that's not going to make or break your college admission um, yeah, so chances. I mean, colleges don't even require SAT right. or ACT anymore. Yeah, so there are, you know, Singapore. test optional schools now. Um, and, again, there's just more of a uh, leaning towards a holistic look at their applicants um, but I mean then again if you really feel that your test score doesn't reflect your skill as a student or your academic level um, then yeah feel free to retake the test but like Mackenzie said I mean put in the work so that you're better prepared this time um, like Tyler said make sure that you're managing your your expectations of yourself keep your stress low eat your Wheaties that day get a good night's sleep all that um, but I think just most importantly, just consider all the factors and, and even talk to some admission counselors, talk to your high school counselor, um, talk about, you know, how important is my test score, it, is my test score in, you know, my application for this school versus this school. There's, there's just so many factors to yeah, consider. Yeah, that's a huge, huge point is we talked about schools that don't require it, mm -hmm. schools that do require it, what is the average of SAT, ACT, if you have a school that you have in mind that is looking specifically for that, it doesn't come right down to like, oh, they didn't hit that, we're out. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get closer to that and you have that goal in mind, that's a good goal to have and you should work towards that mm -hmm. and try to retake it with, with that mindset. So I think, yeah, it's not a end-all be-all, but it is important that... And schools are smart. Like if they see you have straight A's and then you just kind of did average on the SAT, I think they're gonna be like, okay, they only took it like once. Maybe they don't test well, like maybe we won't take this into consideration as much or maybe I don't know. I think they will kind of like consider your your actual grades over the SAT a little bit and like notice those differences. Yeah, I think big things are the confidence level is getting boosted up. So that gives you more of a a feeling of being able to know what, what's coming and where to go. Um, also because you've taken it before, you know now we mentioned the college board test, the practice test, that's a great start. Again, this is the actual test that you just took, so you feel, okay, these are the questions they're gonna ask, right? These, these are the, the certain things we're gonna be having. So I think that's a, a great benefit, and you learn from your earlier mistakes. So you know 
okay, I didn't score so well on the math or I didn't score so well on the grammar, and now you know exactly where you need to put all your focus. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, because they take what you give them. So if you did really well in math and English on the first one and didn't do good in the other sections, you can focus more on those when you're studying for your next try. And then if those are higher, you can just send you know, these two from the first test, these two from the second test, and those are the scores they'll take. Mm -hmm. So it's not like if you do overall worse on the second one, that's going to affect you in any way. Right. But that being said, they do only offer the tests on limited numbers of days, and it's 50 bucks a pop. So that's you don't thing, only yeah. do it. Yeah, time and money. Yeah, time Consideration. And money and anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> I think another vote for me for not retaking it is um, another factor to consider is are you declaring your major on your college applications? Because I know with my SAT scores, I did much better um, with the writing and reading um, because that's where my strengths lie and I was applying as an English journalism major um, to schools. So of course that that helped my case and it's not as important for a writer <laughs> or you know English journalism major to be very skilled in math um, not that it's not important to be well-rounded as a student and a person but it's worth thinking about if you are declaring your major it, it, of course if you're applying to a, be an accountant <laughs> or to study accounting and you did absolutely horribly on the math section there might be My some questions um, but you know if you're like me and you have you know your skill set lies one place and not the other but that's what you choose to study that's that's helpful for your case as well. And most people are like you can clearly see those strengths either in math or reading and writing. Um, I think I, most of my friends were like okay I did really well in English really bad in math like I had like maybe two friends who were like I scored really high in all the sections. Yeah. So and don't like on you. put yourselves yeah. down for that. <laughs> Millionaires down. Yeah. <laughs> Not saying that you should take a low score, but yeah. yeah. I think also to um, bring it back to test prep and studying and everything is once you decide that you are going to retake the test and if you had just finished the test, don't put off studying again. Mm -hmm. um, study right off the bat and not don't make it like a hardcore grind session on, okay, I gotta get through all this stuff. Pick a date that's further out and it gives you enough time to prep for it and take your time. Be slow about it and very methodical. Know what you did wrong again. Take the time to practice that. And because it's so fresh in your mind and it's constantly coming and going, is gonna make it a lot easier when you go to take that next exam because you're fresh on it instead of, oh, I didn't know what to expect, and then you take the first exam, and okay, that went horrible, so how do I improve on it? If you were to just cold turkey it and say, okay, the next exam's in two months or whenever it is, and then you go into it, it's gonna be almost the same experience again. Just give your, and don't cram. Uh, give yourself the time. Again, get plenty of sleep right beforehand and make sure that you are rested because it does help big time. I think also preparing, it doesn't have to be like, you know, three months out, you're studying two to three hours a day. I think that's a lot to put on yourself, especially yeah. with the schoolwork on top. Like Abby's saying, she's struggling finding time to study for the SAT as well. So just doing like small things each day, like maybe a few vocab words, just a few math problems each day for like two to three months. Yeah. You'll get in like, just the like idea of how the questions are asked. I think that was also a big thing people told me after I took the SAT is like you have to look at the wording because they like they don't trick you but the way the SAT writes stuff you have to focus on how they're asking the question yeah like most tests but I think on the subject of not studying too much which is something we've brought up a couple of times um, if you're interested it's worth looking into um, about how our brains work and how studying works um, in particular with certain subjects like there's there's a lot of studies out there on learning languages and things like that but there is some some data out there about how much we can reasonably study how long we can reasonably study and how much information we can reasonably retain um, so you know it was a common mistake that a lot of kids around me were making by just 
would sit down and study for hours and hours and hours, and it's just not effective. Um, it's much better to break it down into smaller sessions over time uh, rather than cramming. Cramming is just not your friend. Especially um, if you're just reading for like four or five hours. Yeah. It's yeah. not yeah. doing it's anything. Like <laughs> if you were to binge eat something and then like, you're just like, all right, I'm going to, I got this whole thing. Yeah. Then you're just going to vomit all over the place. <laughs> oh, God. And the same applies <laughs> for your <laughs> cramming for your knowledge. Because when I don't you get like to this the, analogy. Hold on, hold on, it's a great analogy. <laughs> when you get to the test, you've crammed all that information in your brain and it just spills out and you don't really know what's going on. fit up on the test. And then you're cleaning up vomit Great during the value. SATs, and that's just well, a waste I mean, of time. Vomit, but it's not well, like actual I'm vomit. Sure vomit. Uh, knowledge vomit. Knowledge vomit. vomit. But yeah, it, I mean, it's impossible to retain, you know, that much information when you're just trying to cram it, and it's just not effective. So don't, don't even bother. Yeah, and one thing we did not bring up is find a study group. Uh, everybody in your friend group is going to be around the same time that you're taking the exam, especially in your uh, your year, your your school, and figure out when they're taking their exam, what strengths they have, what weaknesses they have. Try to pair up with somebody that has a strength that's your weakness, and use them to your advantage. So when you're studying, you can help them on something, and they can help you on something. And it, again, the flashcards, having somebody else there is just beneficial because you're not just she flipping it on yourself. That um, is correct. Like, oh, what was this one again? I do that. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Basketball, baby. Um, so yeah, I think uh, all those things definitely add up and will help you on your second test if you decide to take your second test. So there are pros and cons, but for the most part, it's not going to hurt you if you take the second time but it is going to cost you time, money, anxiety. <laughs> so All the things. Keep, keep that into consideration. 